from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likens Show. Like the way you think. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likens. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likens Show. Coming up this hour, Zane Lamprey, the host of the show Three Sheets, returns to the Tom Likens Show. Now imagine this, you're producing this show. You're in the middle of shooting season four. There's about 20 episodes ready to go. And then the network folds. And that's what happened. You're producing a show. The shows are produced, and now you got no number to show them. <laughs> so uh, Zay Lamprey will be here coming up this hour to talk about his show, Three Sheets. Now orphaned. Zane's been here before. I gagged, literally, last time he was here. Literally. In the meantime, this is the one and only program where we uh, talk to our detractors, the haters, the people who hate my guts. And if that's you, you can call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM, and I will give you the opportunity to air it out here. 1-800-5800-866 is the telephone number. Caroline on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Total Jerk, how are you? I'm great. Uh, how are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you so much. So I started listening to your show because I get off work at 2 and there's nothing else to listen to. And I got to say, at first, I completely hated you because all I, all I heard you talk about was just hating on women. But on the other side of the fence, like, I like your views on politics and, you know, I like how you help people out about real estate and all that. You seem like a smart guy. But, you know, when it comes to women, there's just this, you seem so cynical and so angry. Like, somebody must have broken your heart or But, you know, you first of all, if you're a, if you're a man... You've had your heart broken, but more importantly, um, th there's no hate here. I, I don't hate women. I don't hate anyone. I mean, I, I, mean, I just speak old, honestly. Old are you? you don't have any kids or anything, right? No, by design, I don't have any kids. So what are you gonna like? So what are you gonna pass on? Like, what do you when you die and you have all this money and this beautiful house and what are you gonna leave all, all your things to? Like, well, who are you gonna? Who do you have love for in your heart? Anybody out there? Well, all I can say is that uh, just because you're not married, just because you don't have children, doesn't mean there aren't people you care about and care about you, who are okay, good to you, and that, that you then will remember when you go. I know, but besides women like your mother or your sister, you have no, I mean, you don't believe in that you could actually, you don't have any female friends that you just talk to. You know, you just, well, you I've know, always said I have one female friend who got grandfathered in, one slipped through the cracks, uh, but generally speaking, by the way, she... Uh, she has a boyfriend, and uh -huh. and uh, that's never been the basis of our uh, friendship. Uh, but for the most part, no, there's no point of that. I've got plenty of pals, and so I don't need female pals. Uh, I, know, I mean, I have plenty of pals, too. You know, I have a lot of guy friends. I don't need any new pals who want to be my pal because we don't have any chemistry. You know what? I'm not the least bit attracted to you, so let's be friends. Until I meet a guy who won't let me talk to you anymore. What kind of friendship no, is that? Yeah, but you know what? It's like it's like having it's like having a nice meal. You go out, you go to a nice restaurant, you have a nice meal, hanging out with. But you see, it's not a friendship to me. A, fr a friendship. Uh, my friends are friends for life. Okay, I am not a time filler. I'm not a seat filler like they have at the Academy Awards. Until you right. have a boyfriend or a husband who will then tell you you can't talk to me anymore. No, yeah, no, I understand. I that, have you know, no that's interest that's in being your gay friend. No, right. No, I understand that. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you might go out, have a nice dinner, meet some girl randomly, and just have a nice conversation with Why them. Why would I do that? An, an intelligent well, woman. I'll tell you what. Any any, you any, any nice woman who just wants to take me to dinner and just wants to lavish me with uh, 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 cash or prizes. Randomly, not I'm, you're paying for their dinner, but, but someone I, that but, you just meet. But, I, again, if I meet somebody randomly, let's say I meet somebody on an airplane and we're having a conversation. Yeah. If there's no chemistry and there's no likelihood of that kind of a situation, why go to the trouble? I've got plenty of other friends who need my time and attention. I don't need to add to the list and make it bigger. You know, this concept that friends are this infinite list, like like on MySpace or Facebook, where you've got 812 friends, I've got 917 <laughs> friends. Acquaintances. No, but, acquaintances. Well, but that's my Obviously point. You have a few select number I don't friends. need any new ones. I've got enough friends to last three lifetimes. I do not need no, to add seem, to the list. You just, you just seem so cynical about it. And by making a big deal about it, it's almost like, you know, it's almost I'm like... I'm not making a big deal about it. I just simply well, yeah, don't make friends. I just simply, I just simply don't make friends with females. 
No, I know, but I mean, you just, you're so cynical about it. The way you talk about it is just... Because that's the way it really is. All I'm doing is telling the truth. You know what? I, I, why lie about it? Why lie to myself about it? Why lie to you about it? Why lie to a, a, a woman who wants to be my friend? Why lie about this? No, I'm not talking about lying about it. I'm not. I'm not lying either. So, no so this, I, it's not a matter of being cynical. I'm just being honest. It's like it's like those people that it's like those people that hate. You know, it's, it's amazing to me that women always say that men are not honest. Men are a bunch of liars. Men are a bunch of liars. So then, what I do is well, most women say that. Okay, so I say well, I'm going to be honest with you. Since we're never going to have sex, there's no point in me calling you or keeping your phone number or you having my phone number. There's no point in that. You go out. And you go out at night and tart yourself up and meet a boyfriend somewhere, and I'll go meet with my friends and 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 the women that I'm involved with, and that's it. No, but let me say something too. You know, there's a lot of listeners out there. You know, there's a lot of 15 year old girls, 15 year old boys out there listening to you. I mean, basically, what you're saying to them is, "Hey, 15 year old boy, all you need to worry about is getting laid and getting laid by somebody else tomorrow." Right. It's just devoid of romance. That so that is cynical. what guy. By the way, that's how most guys think. Uh, you know, not the guys, not the guys that I hang out with. You well, know, fine. Not, not stupid people. Oh, well, I know thing. you've got gay friends, and I, by that's the way, gay men no, are fantastic. I got gay, gay friends too. They got a lot of game, and I'm helping them with their game because I go out there and I look good. I make them look better. Yeah, but see, these are admit it. <laughs> all your male friends are the men you're not attracted to. That's the list. If you could make a list, men I know who I'm not attracted to. They'd be all your male friends. Some, I've been attract, attracted to some them, of them, but then I'm why haven't you had sex with them? They become my friends. So why didn't you have sex with them later? Because they were so my friends that I didn't need to have sex with them later. Because it kind of ruins it. It's like I don't need to see ruins everybody's it. penis. It ruins you it. You know what I mean? I don't need I'll to see everyone's penis. I'll tell you what. Any, any hot chick that wants to ruin our friendship by, by having sex with me, make an appointment. I'm in. They're in. <laughs> right. All right, Tom. Well, you know, I hope you, you, know, you grow a heart and you, know, you love a woman at some point in time. I really do. No need for that. All right, Tom. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> you hope I grow a heart. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Brett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Brett. Hey, hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, I'm a, I'm a slightly different hater, Tom. I, I don't hate you. I happen to love you. But I, um, I, uh, I hate your audience. I absolutely hate your audience because what? for the most part they're they're ignoramuses. It blows my mind how many people on your show can't get through a conversation without dropping an F bomb or, or using a four letter well, word. Let's differentiate let's differentiate the audience from the callers because the, the callers make up one percent of the audience. You make a good point. You make a solid point. But the only And uh, never forget never that, forget that you are a member of the audience. Yes, I am. So, so you and, are and demeaning you, you are demeaning yourself when you say that. And, and and you're right. I stand corrected on that. But the the one percent that we happen to hear, you know, these are, you know, the, a great example was the uh, the gentleman who uh, who uh, called you earlier who uh, who despite you, I mean, it, it, we just seem to the the pool that uh, that call in for the most part are just. I mean, ignoramuses. This man despites you, and I really hope he's listening right now. You know, get a uh, get a dictionary, pal. You know, but uh, I mean, I love I love the show. I I'm absolutely addicted to the show. I've listened to it every day from the first day that I've listened. I'm I, you know I have to admit that, but it's the uh, it's the people that call in that drive me insane. They have to be driven to a website to see what words you can't use on the uh, on the radio because they're not intelligent enough to realize that uh, you know that the, the largest uh, percent of four letter words can't be used on the air. Yeah, so my mind. Well, we're giving them an education here, the education they never got at home. Heather, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to Hi. say that um, I love your politics, but I really think that where you're wrong and where I hate you is that I think you know, you've, you've been divorced three times. You obviously haven't had a lot of successful relationships, and yet you try to give advice. What would, how, what would you consider a successful relationship? I'm sorry? What would you consider a successful relationship? Uh, one that you're still in. <laughs> for well, starters. Well, the point and is, at one time, at happy. one time, I was in a relationship. So that would have been a successful relationship at that time, correct? Until it failed. Right, until it, until it failed. 
right. So That's you can't say I had a shortage of successful relationships. I had plenty of successful relationships. Well, you've, had, you've had a string of, of short-term successes, but having... Darling, I was married for 10 success. years. Right, but you're not married anymore. Have you ever been married for... Have you ever been married for 10 years? I, Are you married, married now? No, Seven. I'm divorced. Oh, you're divorced. Yes. So, but, so you're an expert. No, I'm not an expert, but I'm also not on a radio show trying to give impressions about myself that I am an well, expert. Well, I don't. Uh, by the way, darling, you are wrong about that. I never claim to be an expert on maintaining a successful marriage. I'm an expert on getting laid. And and anyone who's been married knows the difference right, between being earlier. married. Anyone who's been married knows the difference between getting married and getting laid. But Tom, even earlier, you you were advocating that everybody should go into a relationship. Women going into a relationship looking for the most money. Men going into a relationship looking for the most. Sex, I didn't advocate and... it. I said that's what it is. But that's, but that's not what it is. I that might, is you know, what it is. Again, based on, on what is on paper about you, that you're three times divorced, you're not... Well, a first of all, you don't know what's on man. paper about me because you don't even know the number of times I've been divorced. Okay, perhaps I'm wrong, but I'm sure it's more than one, correct? Yes. Okay, you're not an incredibly good-looking man, so, so perhaps the women that are sleeping with you don't want to give it up. Why would someone sleep with me and then not give it up? That makes absolutely no sense. I'm sorry, say that again. I'm you sorry. said that perhaps the women who sleep with me don't want to give it up. Well, then they're not sleeping with me, are they? Well, if you're sleeping with somebody and she's not that good in bed, then she's probably not having a good time with you. Well, why did she get? Why? Why? Why, why did she get in the sack? Why did she get in the sack with me in the first place? I don't. Maybe because she's the gold digger that I've it. described. That's why. Maybe you're because she's the gold digger that I've been describing in the first place, right? Your money. What's that? It does, I said, maybe you're charming and charismatic, but you get in the sack and you fail. It doesn't mean that, that she's just after your money. Well, darling, why, why do you assume that I fail? I'm the well, one who I'm the one who said that it was no good. And perhaps you got in the sack. You guys had. But, sex, by the way, darling, you have no there. idea. The, you have the, no the idea. You thing. have no idea how many I women from my past. No, you have no idea how many women from my past continue to pursue me. You just have no idea. Yes, but to, to, to take that anecdote... Why do you brag experience? about that? You're always bragging. You're always bragging about all the women who pursue you. Why do you do that? <laughs> but you're you're taking an anecdotal experience and professing it as a... All, as a, as all, a experience, it, all experience is anecdotal unless you're in a, a, a controlled scientific experiment. It's all right, anecdotal. Well, you should preface what you say about relationships. I don't have to... Uh, no, I, I'm not going to assume that everybody is as stupid as you are. I mean, some people are more I'm, intelligent I'm really than you are. Not stupid. I'm, I'm, well, I'm I, again, I, well, if you're intelligent, you don't need all this explanation, then do you? See, you figure no, it out. I, See, I'm the asking, other people figure it out, too. What I'm asking for, what I don't understand, is why it is... I mean, if you're so brilliant in, in politics, and you're right on, I uh, love your politics. Yeah. How is it that you can't realize that, you know what, I'm probably not the best person to be throwing out relationship advice and I don't. Wait, stop right there. I do, not give rela the, I do not give relationship advice. I give men advice on how to get laid. That is not relationship advice. But, but you do give them relationship advice when you no, say that. No, I don't. Go into a relationship with any woman. Go into a relationship That's with any That's not relationship advice. That's I'm advising them not to get into a relationship. I'm not telling them how to have a relationship how or how to have a better relationship or how to have a good relationship or how to have a successful relationship. I don't advise people on any of that. And I don't claim to be an expert in those areas either. But what I'm trying to say is that you shouldn't be talking about relationships at all because you really don't know it. I don't. I talk about. about staying out of relationships. Right. But if you haven't ever been in a relationship that's lasted for life, how do you know that people well, have you? shouldn't be in a relationship Well, then, who has? How many I mean, people where, have where do you even How many people? The, the listeners here have, uh, are tw in their 20s and 30s. How many of them are in a relationship that's lasted for life? That would be the only people who could give advice are people who are dying. Well, my parents have been married for close to 40 years. But, they haven't, but still, we don't know how long their life is going to be. We don't know if they'll be in that relationship for life. Maybe they'll get divorced next year. Who knows? Probably not. But my point you is You don't that know. I mean, we don't know if they'll be in a relationship for life until they're dead. That's true. So but that means so nobody far, can give advice. That years, means nobody can give advice because by the time we know if they've had a relationship for life, they're dead. 
But you haven't even done any research, haven't even done any studying on interpersonal relationships. I don't have to do any research. If you have money, power, or fame, a man is going to get sex. It's that simple. I agree with you, but I don't take that. That's it. Take that jumping off point to say that all women or the majority of women are looking for just sex out of a relationship. I do. I, I don't think most women are looking for sex. I think they're looking for money. I, I don't. I, I don't think that they're solely looking for either. I didn't say they're solely looking for money. I know they're not looking for sex. Yeah, but see, you always hide behind that and say, "Oh, well, I'm not talking about all women. I'm talking I'm about not. the majority." I'm not, and I am talking about the majority. Yes. But that's not the majority. That's the point. You, that's not actually the majority of women that yes. just want money. Yes, the it is. The majority of women do yes, not just is. want money. Yes, it is. And the majority is. of men are yes, not just do. looking for sex. Well, then they, they wouldn't want to get life. married because when you get married, it's all about money. That is why you get married. No, actually, yes. you get married because you trust that person to partner up with them, that they will take No, care but you trust them. them. You trust them by signing away. Them. A man is signing away half of everything he earns in oh. order to get, quote, unquote, love. Technically, that's not technically. In fact, yeah, that is state. what it is. According to the laws <laughs> of the law state of California, where you live and I live, that is what it is. If you really love somebody, don't make them sign a contract. If you really trust somebody, you don't need to sign them to a contract. It is because you don't trust them that you need to sign them to a contract. You need to sign them to a contract so that you know they're monogamous. You need to sign them to a contract to know they're going to give you their money. If you really trusted and loved somebody, you wouldn't make them sign a contract, would you? I actually, I actually agree with where you're coming from on that, but I don't think that it should stop other people from getting married for yes, love. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. Whatever think about in that moment. It is stupid for men to get married. It is absolutely stupid. I don't think that it's stupid, but I also don't think that you should be giving any sort of advice on staying in relationships, getting out of relationships, not having I, relationships. Again, I don't, I don't give advice on staying. I don't. I don't advise you stay in a relationship. I don't advise you, a, a man get into a relationship. I advise that men stay out of relationships, stay uncommitted, stay unmarried, and not spend their money just to get love. I agree with you until they're at least twenty-five. No, but ever. Beyond that, people need ever. to couple up. It's part of the human ever. condition. Uh, you can love somebody without signing a contract. I agree with you, but you're saying don't even do that. Don't. Bang them and leave them is what you say. That, that, that's right. Pop them and dump them. <laughs> but, but, but the human condition and the human needs as far as interaction and so, you know, social I've got plenty of, a, plenty of people love me, darling. It may be hard to believe. Plenty of people love me, but I don't have to pay them to do so. Zane Lamprey is joining us next. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Our guest, Zane Lambert. You've been with us before, and... Um, I, I'm amazed at the situation he finds himself in. So you've produced about 20 episodes for season four ready to go. Yep. And then your network folded. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's weird. It is weird. It, at first, I got I to admit, when I, I first got the call from the production company. They're like, we got bad news. And then they said, the mojo's going under. And I said, ah, it's not really that bad because I just figured, you know, Spike's probably waiting and... And the Travel Channel, they probably want a show like this. The show, I mean, it's on a network that, that most people haven't heard of, but I think more people have heard of the show than of the of the network. And so I figured it was just going to go, you know, just straight from Mojo, just premiere uh, January 1st on and, and another network. So so what happens? All right, so you, you, I imagine that uh, the Mojo HD network per, paid to produce these shows. Right, so it, it was, the uh, the contract was with In Demand, so... Uh, in demand, you know, pay for the the twenty episodes, and uh, then when they when when they decided to close one of their divisions, Mojo, then uh, they, um, you know, we don't we'd only shot like seventeen episodes, so we have to finish the rest of them. I actually I actually just got back from Panama last weekend, and I'm going to uh, Amsterdam and Whistler to finish the last two episodes. So here I am shooting a show for what. My mom, the internet, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm this send is you a, be I, the most expensive YouTube series yeah, ever produced. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, for people who have not seen your show, Three Sheets, tell us uh, what it's all about. I travel around the world and I drink. 
that's that's yes. I mean, there's really what else? Well, you want I to do that too, but nobody <laughs> pays me to do that's it. That's right, and I get paid to do it. And as, as some people say, make fun of people, but you know, we we go, we we drink, we have a good time. Sometimes I drink too much. Uh, rarely do I not drink enough, but um, we you know it, we just have a great time, and people don't realize that they're learning, and that's I think that's the basis that that should be the basis of any sort of entertainment and infotainment. If that's do people say that anymore? Uh, no. When they're trying to justify a particular <laughs> kind of a program on a particular kind of subject, they generally do. Now, now we do a radio show about uh, wine, beer, and spirits on the weekends, and um, our show is a little different because we just bring in a bunch of winemakers and distillers, and they talk about their products. Um, but one thing I, I found in doing a show like that is that uh, although we love to put booze in our mouth, uh, we're in denial about it as a society. I don't think you know people don't seem to want to admit that they want to know more about what they put in their mouth. This bottle of water I'm holding here has more information about what's in it than your average bottle of booze. Uh, there are all kinds of rules uh, keeping you from putting a list of ingredients on on a label. People don't know frequently uh, you know, what it's made of or uh, how old the ingredients are, where they came from. Nothing. Um, nothing. So that's what I'm here for, Tom. Thank you. To educate us. Yes, to educate. Yes, <laughs> and you go to the places where the stuff is made. Yes, uh, you know we, we we did twenty. Well, let's see, we we did nineteen countries between because we also did the New Year's Eve special, uh, which people can't watch on Mojo, but they can watch on MojoHD.com, or they can come to my uh, my New Year's Eve party and watch it with me. That's up in Hollywood. They can go to ZaneLamprey.com to find out information about that. But um, so we shot nineteen episodes. Uh, I went and drank with the Maasai in Africa. I, then I drank with their their um, their adversaries, another tribe. Uh, I went to Namibia, uh, t- uh, New Zealand, Tahiti. Although I told my wife I was going to French Polynesia because it didn't sound as as, as nice. So, yes. Sorry, honey. I went to Tahiti. Can we go to Tahiti together, honey? <laughs> That's what it would have been. You're I going would've... to Tahiti and I can't go? Well, it's bad enough when I get back from working. It's, it's like, you know. You know, you were on your little vacation. No, I was working. I got paid, right? That justifies it. I come back with an awesome tan, flip-flop tan, you know? It's rough. That's like when your wife says, you're in there playing on the computer. I know you're playing on the computer. You see, they're doing a spreadsheet. You have my house bugged? (laughs) And then, of course, uh, kickoff time, 1 o'clock on Sunday, they start vacuuming. That's that's marriage in a nutshell. That's when they want to watch The Hills or something. That's exactly right. So uh, here you are now. You're trying to save your TV show, which I, uh, I think is a worthy cause. But uh, I, now when people are going to protest, this is interesting. You don't even have the show to go on it and say, save us. Right, right. So you've got this show and uh, a, a, an email address or something. I mean, That's right. Well, yeah, I mean, we're doing everything through the website. Um, I have all the episodes up on my website. I have uh, the Save Three Sheets information so people know where they can go. We're meeting in Century City at uh, Rock Sugar tomorrow for a big, big uh, protest rally slash pub crawl. So we're going to be going from Century City by Spike and uh, all the networks. Uh, going to Beverly Hills to, it's called Senegal, it used to be the uh, El Torito Grill. Yes. So we'll be there for our second stop, and then we're going to march back. Uh, you know, I, I, when I first kind of came up with this a few weeks ago, I thought maybe we'd have 50 to 100 people, but we've gotten we've gotten about uh, 700 confirmations. These, these are just people telling us that they're going to come. So, I don't know. People are coming from all over the country just to, to support it. Because, you know, it, it sort of started as... as to keep three sheets in the in the public eye for just a little bit longer to see what happens, but now I feel like it really can make a difference. If we if we have a thousand people picketing, chanting, maybe a little inebriated, uh, out there picketing in front of uh, Spike or Travel Channel or HBO wherever, they're they're going to have to take notice and they're going to see these this drunken mob and be intimidated into picking it up. Let me ask you a stupid question about the network. What, what appeared in its place? Did one day it just had like a production card that said, "Please stand by"? I mean, oh no. <laughs> well, you know what they, happened? They didn't even uh, they didn't even give a warning. Uh, it's just sort of gone. It was gone, and I watched it because I knew it was going off the air because you could see when you go through the, the the guide, it says off air. So I was watching it, and it was a show called Pressure Cook, and then beep, color bars. And I was just like, man, that's it. Not even the last thing they aired was the was the promo, the promo, the commercial for the New Year's Eve special. They're, they're actually the network's hoping that enough people go to MojoHD.com on New Year's Eve 
to watch the special that they'll actually be able to show those numbers to a network because they didn't rate. So they can't say, oh, we had this many viewers, whatever. They can just tell you how many homes they're in. They couldn't tell you. They didn't have a Nielsen rating, so they couldn't tell you how, how popular they were. There was a radio station. I will tell you a radio story that relates to this. There was a radio station in Patchog, New York called WYFA which stood for Where Your Friends Are. Remember radio stations like that? <laughs> it was at AM 1580. And they were down to selling spots, like as we say in the business, a buck a cluck. And one day, the owner of the station came in to the midday disc jockey, and he said, uh, uh, we're going out of business. We're going off the air. You can stop now. <laughs> that was it. Just pick and, up your stuff. And, and the guy said, well, don't you want me to finish my shift? He said, no, no need. You can stop right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that, wow! <laughs> that's kind of you know. Be, no, the, the good thing about it is the hits to my website went went through the roof because everyone's like, "Zane, what just happened?" Because yeah. there wasn't even a press release. I mean, there was a press release to the press, but but for for everyone else, there's no way for them to find out. So, boom, it's gone. So now it's replaced by some other networks. Sometimes I mean, maybe it's maybe it's color bars in some places. I don't know. Zane Lamprey is our guest. His show Three Sheets. Well, it. Uh it, it's out there, but the TV network, Mojo HD, just disappeared, and so he's on a campaign to save his show. We'll talk about booze. We'll take your calls coming up as we continue. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Like It Show. Tom like his show on one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, and we are here with Zane Lamprey. This show is called Three Sheets, and uh, he's trying to save his show for God's sake. Bob, well, he's a boozer like the rest of us here on the Tom like his show. It's the bottom line. Now are we going to do a little boozing here. Is that what we're gonna we do? are going to drink, Tom. Love that. We are going to start off with uh, this is from an episode that that no one can see. This was uh, this was shot in Iceland. Uh, Brennavin, aka the Black Death. Black Death. The Black Death. Tom, remember last time when I gave you Viper rum and you threw it by my shoe? Yes, I that do. Was awesome. I threw it by my own shoe <laughs> <laughs> and my pants, if I recall. Those are my pants, but that's ah. a different story. Ah. All right, so this is Brennavin. The, the deal with um, with uh, uh, with Iceland that they had a um, a prohibition. That was lifted in 1935, and, and as as I believe, and someone out there can, can probably will probably call up and tell me I'm wrong, but I, I believe it. They only lifted the ban on beer in 1997, so that's why you don't have any Icelandic beers. You have a few, but they're they're pretty young and really not that good. Um, so so this is this is a bottle of Brennavin, which we're going to polish off here, Tom. Th this was called the Black Death because, and given a simple black label like this, because they wanted people to not want it, so they called it something that they thought people would be afraid of, and. You'll see. It's not that bad. Now, now, can you tell us what it is, or am I going to taste it first? Um, yeah, we'll taste it first. As I, <laughs> as I look at my cheat sheet over here. Oh, it's from Potato Pulp and Caraway. It, you know, it tastes like licorice. But the cool thing about it, and this is really good, I have a, a cool visual thing for radio, is that it, it's, it's, it's like oil-based. Yeah. So when you add water to it, it turns, uh, it turns white. It turns milky. No. It still looks pretty clear. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for that, I'm going to pound this one, then we can drink one together. Very I'm going to do the punishment. You know, I was thinking of in uh, in Greece. Uh, the Sambuca? No. That's Italy. Uzo? Uh, Uzo. The bottle looked the same. Yeah, and Uzo tastes like licorice. Let's see what this tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> I was drunk when I shot the episode. What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, that's vile. Here, try it. Oh my god, it's horrible. <laughs> okay, now okay, okay. Now I remember. Now I remember. Here, go ahead. All right. Oh my lord. I can't do a whole shot of anything, much less this. Oh, that's disgusting. What is that? Well, after that last thing you gave me, nothing is disgusting. I, I can drink it. It's not terribly appealing. I love that the, the here you go again. The, I love that the uh, the alcohol expert. I can comes taste out. the caraway. <laughs> it tastes it. You know, it tastes like a loaf of rye bread. It does take it. You'd be very good. Don't steal my show. Don't go, don't come out with some drinking show. I always find that's the most difficult thing to, to say what things taste like. 
All right. All right. <laughs> Mo- moving on. But that's those seeds on rye bread are called caraway seeds, and it tastes like that. You know you're so smart, Tom. No, that's why no, I listen to your I, show I, every day religiously. I just drink too much. So, uh, all right. So here we got uh, Zabrovka b- uh, Bison Grass Vodka. Uh huh. And this is illegal. It's illegal. Why? Because the FDA, because the piece of grass in there, I'm not going to even say because I'll be wrong. <laughs> because it's 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 the only it causes cancer or something here. Oh, thanks. It's, 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 it's delicious. Um, so I had this one in Poland. Another episode that people can um, cannot watch. Tom, now, now this one I I'm putting my nose in. Like I would do with a glass of wine, and it does smell like grass. Yes, it's it's supposed to have vanilla e hints to it. It does. Does it? Hold on. Yeah, but it doesn't offend me. That's slightly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that good. I like a nice scotch, something well, of uh, course. age, you know, but this, you know, whatever. So they put a piece of grass in it and make it illegal. Some little smoke on it. it, something brown. Um, so I want to tell people, Tom, um, I want to I want to rally the troops. And if they won't listen to me, they'll listen to you. I want people to get to, to show up tomorrow to the, the, the rally. Uh, it's at, uh, we're meeting at Rock Sugar. In Century City tomorrow at 3 p.m., it is a giant Save Three Sheets rally. If you want more information, go to ZaneLamper.com. You can also watch the full episodes there and uh, find out about the New York one we're doing on Thursday. So travel around, traveling around the country trying to save three sheets. We'll take a break. We'll go back and take some calls for Zane Lamprey. Your telephone calls coming up next. Tom, like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. Zane Lamprey. His show is called Three Sheets, and uh, it's been on for three seasons. And here he is with season four, and the network went out of business. So <laughs> he wants you to help him save the show. And while he's talking about boozing here, 1 800 5 800 Tom Heather on the Tom Like His Show for Zane. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Zane. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say that I we did the same thing, just like you were talking about. Turn on the TV. And when, oh, my God, Mojo's gone. And we're like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Three Sheets is supposed to come on in a couple of months with new episodes. Like, where's our stuff? Yep, yep. That's, so, what, that's what happened to me as well. <laughs> we're so upset. We've been watching since your first season and love, love, love your show. Well, you're, and, you're in Southern California, right? Yeah. Are you going to do something about it? Are you going to come to the rally? We, I would love to, but... It'd be kind of pointless. I'm pregnant right now, so I can't really drink with so anybody. So she's drinking for two. Yeah. Um, S- send, send, send some representatives. And, you did. Who, who'd you email? Um, I emailed Spike and I think um, Travel Channel. And I, I put you on my Facebook, so it's, I've been kind of keeping updated. It's amazing, right? It's amazing that these these other networks didn't didn't snatch it up. I mean, the show was so popular on Mojo. They one time did a um, a focus group, asked people what their favorite show was and what what why they tuned into Mojo. And they, one of the guys confided confided to me, one of the directors there, it was uh, unanimous. One hundred percent of the people said three sheets. So. Very nice. Heather, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Garrett on the Tom Likas Show for Zane Lamprey. Hello. Zane, this is ridiculous. I do not understand how you're not going to be on the air anymore. We need to figure this out. Where Where is the rally? The rally is in Century City tomorrow. Are you in L.A.? Or so, or uh, Southern California? Orange County, but I see. Okay. It. Yeah, come on up. We're meeting at Rock Sugar tomorrow in Century City at 3 p.m., we're gonna uh, we're gonna take off. We're gonna have some drinks and then take off around four and march around Century City, go into Beverly Hills, have some more drinks, and then come back to Century City and end everything at the Pink Taco. Russell, you're on the Tom Likas show with Zane Lamprey. Hello. No. Hello. Yes. <laughs> have you been drinking? I have been. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you need to. <laughs> 
No, my question was, uh, I'm, I'm an older guy. I'm 45. I don't know if that's old on your show. Uh, your show was so intriguing that uh, it ranges from 18 or 21, I guess, to, uh, to all the way you know, to, to 70 years old. It's such an intriguing show. And I want how uh, your past businesses that you've uh, been ventured and, and teamed up with, how you're not able to plug into one of those guys that's uh, pretty successful uh, in in distributing his DVDs and VHSs. <laughs> is of, he talking of, about of, Girls Gone Wild? Deal. Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, yeah because it, it, it's, the same, it's the same demographic that watches your show, Three Sheets. Um, I'm not so sure about that. My mom watches Three Sheets. She doesn't watch Girls Gone Wild, so... <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I understand, but 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 your mom's not the one buying all, all buying the DVDs of season one, two, and three. No, no, I, I give them to her. I wouldn't do that to my mom. <laughs> right, but guys like me, I'm the one that buy them, and I'm the one that watches all the other stuff. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah, I'll give him a call. <laughs> Thanks. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's JP on the Tom Likas show with our guest Zane Lamprey. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Zane. How are you guys doing? Great. What's up? I didn't want to say hi to Zane without agreeing to host first. Tom, big fan. And, uh, yeah, Zane, hi. I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow at, uh, at, Rock, uh, at Rock Sugar when you start off the rally. Fantastic. And uh, my question to you was, uh, I'm moving to Dubai in January, and I was thinking, have you guys ever thought about doing something in a Muslim country, even though there's not much of a drinking culture over there? Yeah. It's a little bit more like the Vegas show. Or yeah, it's, it's, it, it, you're sort of hindered by that because the only place that they drink over in Dubai is in the hotels. You can't, yeah. you can't even drink outside. So it'd be like a hotel hopping episode. That's not to say that it wouldn't happen. I would probably just need to get on a network first before I could afford to spend that money. Obviously, obviously. Yeah. But you know what? I, I have to say the show is incredible. I'm a huge, huge fan. Awesome. Of that. I have absolutely no doubt that this thing is going to get picked up sooner or later. When a new budget come out in January, someone's going to bite. Absolutely. Awesome, brother. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for the call, Thank you. JP. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Sergio on the Tom Like His Show for our guest, Zane Lamprey. His show is called Three Sheets. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom and Zane? What's going on? Hey. Um, I just want to say, dude, I love your show. Love Three Sheets, man. Um, I live in Vegas, and uh, I used to have, you know, like Mojo Channel. And I moved to California, and, and I couldn't see it anymore. You know, but I just want to say that that show is awesome because it, it helps people like me that work in the liquor in, you know, industry to actually learn more about our products that we actually sell, like liquor and wine. That's cool. But, like, like what? Like like what product? You know, no, no, well, no. Like for me, it's it's mostly tequila. You know, like you know, like I saw like Jose Cuervo. You know, which I love the Family Reserve. My yeah. favorite tequila. Yeah. And I know you actually you know went there. You know, so, but, you know, tequila, all the vodkas, you know, so you name it, we sell it, you know, and, and like, you learn, you know, like, you learn, like, are you, are you drinking right now? Cause I'm drinking. I feel like maybe you're not drinking. <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Hey, well, it's Monday Night Football, you know, so kind of, yeah. Oh, you, wait, so you are drinking? Yes. How, how many drinks have you had? About four. You gotta, you know, you gotta call me back at seven. I, uh, all right, I will. I will. I'll call back. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, brother. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey guys, uh, Zane. Tom, how you guys doing? Hey. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, Zane, uh, the Zubroka, uh They have that over at Warzawa in Santa Monica. So. Yeah. They, what now? Okay. So they have like an FDA approved version it's it tastes okay. similar it's they they say that it tastes the same but it's not the same grass the grass that they okay. use from from Poland is different than the grass they use over here so it looks this exactly the same uh it just tastes slightly different and it won't kill you so it's probably better there okay a well, couple other things uh your new year's eve uh, party are you going to be there uh, yeah, I, I, de well, I definitely want to go, but I can't go tomorrow. My uh, my lady friend, uh, fiance, has already told me uh, I can't go protest tomorrow, even though I definitely want to. But, T Tuesday uh, is a very good day for protesting and and <laughs> and drinking. By the way, that's true. Yes. That's true. But uh, I did want to say I missed the show. We're both big fans, and uh, we really want this thing to uh, to get picked up soon. Awesome. Well, I'll see you at New Year's Eve then. Right. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Erlinda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Just hey. want to say I love you, first of all. <laughs> I'm so Tom. nervous. Tom. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm nervous, Tom, now that she said that. I didn't even think about how much I love you. <laughs> this is so uncomfortable. Your name is Zane, right? Yes, my name is Zane. Your name is? Yes. 
It's so it's so exotic. I love it. Thank you. So is okay. Linda. What's that? It is my grandmother's name. That's oh, okay. I think I flew Air Linda to Canada once. Is that not the same? Sorry. Um, I heard it was from the Philippines. I really don't know where it's oh, okay. from. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, my first flight. Well, first of all, I was listening to the show, and I know Tom is really good, uh, really big on education, and you know, you know, becoming a better person. And I, I hear this, and I'm totally interested because first of all, I love to drink. And second, I want to travel the world. That's my goal in life. You should host a drinking show and because I, I had the same I would aspiration. Be your assistant. I want to know how you got into it and if you could send me some info. Or yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just come over and drop it off if that's cool. You know, so <laughs> someone always asks me. I always get asked by the same person if I, if if they can be my assistant. And eventually, I'm just like, Mom, you're going to stop calling me for a week because no. You can't come with me anymore, because I'm you know you know why you know why because Air Linda is coming. We're going to fly her to our, our next location. Seriously, I got big boobs, and I know TV likes that. Yes, <laughs> television. They love they love those. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks, thanks to my mother. <laughs> but I okay. really am interested on how you got into that, and how did you go about on getting your? You know what? You can find it all at zanelamprey.com. My whole story is right there. And then and then and then give me your address. I'll come drop off the uh, the information you, you requested. Thank you for that, Adam. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Zane. Hey. Uh, real quick, I'm sure you got people that say they're big fans, but uh, wanted to tell you that after watching the show, my wife and I named our son Zane, and uh, have to give you all the credit. Thanks, man. Did, you didn't name your kid Zane Lamprey, though, right? No, no, no. no. We, right. we were gonna. We, we thought about interjecting that as the middle name, but went ahead and passed. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'll thank my mom for that. Big fan, and uh, after I saw Thirsty Traveler, I thought, "Wow, I want to do that." And you went ahead and stole it. So, congrats. I did. I stole it from him, and I made the show good. Good, <laughs> a lot better. <laughs> Thanks, man. Take care. Awesome. Cheers. Thank you for the show. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Thank you in. very much, Tom. I love being here, and you kick ass, my friend. Best of luck. Your show is good. People love you. And there they are. They're all crawling out of the woodwork for you. So hopefully they'll see you at your big event. Thank you, sir. Zane Lamprey, his show is Three Sheets. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.